I mean, we scientists are really arrogant. You know what we claim? We claim that our theories actually work in the whole universe. Um, all of the laws of physics that we have here on Earth are basically can also be applied to the rest of the universe. I mean, how crazy is that? I've not visited the rest of the universe. How can I know? How can I? I've never been behind the moon. How do I know that a pen or an, uh, something that I drop here on Earth will also drop on the moon? I've never been there before. You know what? I'm a biologist. There's the cell theory. You know what the cell theory says? All living things are made of cells. I have not seen all living things yet. How can I say that? Isn't this crazy? We scientists, we generalize. Our theories are general. Okay, and we're actually doing the wrong thing because I, I'm also a teacher and I always tell my students, look, listen, your research question has to be specific, more specific. It's not specific enough. Okay, uh, and then all of a sudden, what are we scientists doing? We're going general. Okay, uh, it, it, it's kind of weird, right? Um, and this is actually a, a problem that has been recognized already for a very long time. Okay, essentially, it's like this. It's uh, called it's uh, called the problem of induction. They call it. It's it's such a big problem that they even invented their own term for it. It's called the problem of induction. Um, what is in, what what does this mean? Induction is or inductive logic is is if you have a specific case, a specific experiment, and then you kind of uh, extrapolate a general law out of a specific experiment okay so that's kind of what we we scientists are doing right and i see one a living thing a plant under the microscope here it has cells wow i see a second one an earthworm i put on here i see cells wow uh, i put a mosquito on here uh, i see cells wow three things haha <laughs> all living things are made of cells right from three individual cases i'm extrapolating i claim i develop uh, a theory that covers all living things. And that is called the problem of induction because the people, philosophers and scientists realized already quite early on that, that that's actually a problem. Okay, how can, how can you do that, right? How can you, how can you generalize so much, right? Um, because we want to rely on science to tell us something about the world, right? Um, and then we're actually doing exactly the thing that you're not supposed to do. You're kind of claiming that the world is like this uh, by coming up with a general theory even though you only know a few specific cases it's called the problem of induction right and uh, this uh, problem of induction has been uh, people have worried uh, about this philosophers and scientists for for many many years um, there's another problem that uh, people have uh, worried about and that is uh, essentially the thing is that just because two things happen at the same time that's called correlation right um, does this actually mean that one thing causes the other thing to happen? I mean, there's this classical example. I mean, uh, by the way, this is uh, correct. Um, the more ice cream that you sell, um, the more people are bitten by sharks. I mean, there, it's clear, right? Uh, there, we've got the statistic for that. Um, so what, if I just tell you that, then you're probably going to say, ah, eating ice cream somehow attracts the sharks, right? Or I don't know. Yeah, it's dangerous. Maybe you should maybe forbid selling ice creams, right? But the, the, but the thing is the following. Um, it's like it's summertime. Uh, during summertime, more ice cream is being sold and more people go swimming. That's why they're more often bitten by sharks. But you see, that's a a, an example of correlation. Uh, but maybe there is a connection. I don't know. How do I know? So the question really is, is how often do things have to happen together so that they're actually really connected by cause and effect? Right? So this was another thing that people have worried about for a long time. Um, and um, the thing is the following, that there was a guy, his name was Sir Karl Popper. He's considered by many people to be one of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century. And this guy, he worried also about this and he actually solved the problem of induction. And um, he basically proposed the following. He said, well, theories are only correct until they are proven wrong. And he called this principle his falsification principle. So uh, basically, when I say that uh, all living things are made of cells, Okay, then this theory is correct until someone finds me one living thing which is not made of cells. So it's up to you now. You go out, um, you grab a microscope and you find me this one living thing that's not made of cells. And if it's really not made of cells, um, then you know what? You've killed with one experiment, you've killed a whole theory. Okay, so that is uh, pretty remarkable. And um, what uh, this basically what he said is the following: a scientific theory is a good scientific theory if it is easily falsifiable. Careful, falsifiable means that it allows you to do an easy experiment to prove it wrong. But if it is not has not been proven wrong yet, 
then it's a good theory. Okay. Some people say if uh, theories have to be false. No, that's not, that's not that's not correct. Falsifiable means that it must allow you to come up with an experiment to possibly prove it wrong. Okay. And if it still has not been proven wrong, then it's a very good theory. Okay. Cell theory being an example, which is a very good theory because so far it has not been proven wrong, and it will stay correct until someone finds me one living thing which is not made of cells. Okay. So this is how he basically solved this problem. Uh, this problem of induction. He says, yeah, okay, we have to do induction. We have to generalize. Okay. But what we're saying is it's not always truth until all eternity. Okay. It's only correct until it's proven wrong. So it kind of, he limited this a little bit. Okay. Uh, so it, this kind of gave a much, uh, di uh, a slightly different view of what science is, is because in, in, the, in around the 1920s, there was this uh, concept of logical positivism around. And many people still stick to that without actually knowing it. They say, well, it's scientific, it's science. If you prove it correct, you just do an experiment, then it's correct. Yeah, but that's logical positivism. And that's an outdated uh, approach to science. Okay. Uh, because we now know that uh, just because you prove it once, I don't know, I don't know, I have got this bottle here with some chemical, I drop it, I drop, let it go and it falls to the ground. I've proven it correctly, all objects fall to the ground, right? Yeah, but one experiment is enough, right? No, it could be, I don't know, the next time I'm, I'm dropping, I don't know, a fly or something, it flies away, right? So I have to change the theory around again. Yeah, but uh, what uh, Popper said is, is, well, you just stick to the theory until you find more evidence of the contrary. Okay. And the logical positivists of the 1920s, they thought you've got one experiment and uh, that's it. And then the theory is proven. And that's uh, essentially uh, what from nowadays viewpoint an outdated view. So uh, why is Popper actually so useful? And he's one, I think he's one of the most uh, useful uh, philosophers around because it's really a good thing because he, with his uh, principle of falsification, he also has now a method to actually decide whether a certain statement is scientific or not. I mean, there's so much, I mean, nowadays in the internet, so much, um, so many false claims and, and things that are actually not scientific being sold as being scientific. Okay, so, but what is now scientific? Scientific, when a statement, when I make a statement, um, I don't know, blue is a nice color. Okay, um, yeah, for me, it's, sure, it's a nice color. I like wearing blue. Why is it not a scientific statement? The reason what Popper said is, is because you cannot do any experiments with it to possibly prove it wrong. Blue will always be a nice color for me. Okay, it's always a nice color, right? Um, so there is no way that this can be disproven. Right. Um, and uh, so this basically means that if you if somebody makes a claim and claims it to be scientific, then essentially you always have to ask a second question. Is there a certain can you do some kind of an experiment that actually would possibly prove it wrong? I'll give you another example of uh, what uh, Popper actually criticized also psychoanalysis a lot. Um, you are who you are because of your early childhood experiences. I think this nobody might deny that. Okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? But there is no way that you can experimentally test that. Okay. There's no way that I can turn time back to, and that's why he said it's not scientific. Right. Um, so this basically shows that uh, the philosophy of Sir Karl Popper is actually very useful in that sense, because uh, his principle of falsification not only makes it clear what science is and what it is not, but it also solved this so-called uh, the problem of induction, the, the, the issue that people were worried about. So I mean, the generalization problem. Right. Um, yeah. And as I mentioned already before, it, there are special terms for everything. So this was the one that was the problem of induction and this problem of, of separating the sciences from the non sciences. I just want to tell you how important this was for even for that, they invented their own term. It's called the demarcation problem. I don't think that it's important for you to know it uh, or remember it, but I just want to emphasize that these problems were so big in the philosophy of science that they actually invented their own terms for this. Okay. The problem of induction, the demarcation issue, right? Okay. I think that is uh, really uh, all I wanted to say for right now. I think it's not going to be the last time that I'm going to talk about so-called Popper because it's got a few other interesting things as well. But for right now, I think simply wanted to clarify what his philosophy is a little bit. And I wish you a nice day. All the best and bye-bye.